Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing greatest common divisors. Okay, so what I want to do in this next video is develop some understanding uh, for which elements in a commutative ring are going to have the same principal ideals. Okay, so let's say we've got some arbitrary element which we'll call D here in our commutative ring, and we want to ask can we find other elements in the commutative ring which have the exact same principal ideal as D? And you can obviously imagine that D here is your greatest common divisor of A and B, and that we're looking for other elements in the commutative ring that are also going to be greatest common divisors of A and B. Okay, so I want to find another element in the ring that has the exact same principal ideal as D here. Okay, so my claim is that what you can do is take your element D and multiply it by any unit in the ring. Okay, so in the commutative ring, find any unit and then multiply it with D and the answer you will get will also be a greatest common divisor, or rather it will, more generally actually, it will generate the exact same principal ideal. Okay, so take U is a unit Okay, now remember what a unit is. A unit in a ring is just some element which has a multiplicative inverse. So not all elements in a ring have multiplicative inverses. Those which do are called units in the ring. Okay, so U is supposed to be some element uh, in the ring that has a multiplicative inverse. Now, if you multiply D by U and get UD, my claim is that if you create the principal ideal generated by U times D, it will always be the same as the principal ideal generated by D. Okay, now obviously, in the case of certain units, multiplying by U won't actually change the element at all, but then, of course, trivially, the theorem will be true, uh, because it will still be the case that the principal ideal we've got here is the same. Okay, so you can try multiplying by units to get other elements in the ring which will have uh, the same principal ideal. Okay, so let's prove that this is going to be the case. So the way I'm going to prove that these two principal ideals are equal to one another is I'm going to prove that each of them is contained within the other. Okay, so firstly let's prove that the principal ideal generated by D completely contains the principal ideal generated by U times D. Okay, so the reason is is that if we consider the principal ideal generated by D, then what we're going to do is multiply all the elements of the ring with this element D, okay, to get this set. Now, one of the things that we will end up getting will be U times D. So U times D will end up being an element of the principal ideal generated by D, okay, because all I've done there is multiply D by U. So, of course, it will end up being in there, okay? Now, this is an ideal, and any element that's in an ideal it must be the case that all multiples of that element by things uh, in the ring uh, are also going to be in that ideal, because the ideal must be closed under multiplication. Okay, so what we can then conclude is that the principal ideal generated by u times d here is completely contained within the principal ideal generated by d, because the instant that element is in the principal ideal generated by d, all of its multiples must also be in that ideal, otherwise it wouldn't be an ideal. Okay, so we can conclude that. And now, because U is a unit, we can work in the opposite direction. So now what I now want to prove is that the principal ideal generated by D is contained within the principal ideal generated by U times D. Okay, so how can I do this? Well, what I want to show is that D is contained within the principal ideal generated by U times D. And of course this is going to be the case, because when I construct this, I'll go through all the elements of the ring and multiply them all by U times D. And one of the things that I'll end up doing is multiplying it by the multiplicative inverse of U. Okay, so this is why it was important that U was a unit. And then when I do that, of course I'll end up with the answer D. So I can now conclude that D is an element of the principal ideal generated by U times D, and then the exact same argument as before now holds. If D is in this ideal, then all multiples of it must be in the ideal as well. So the principal ideal generated by D must be completely contained within the principal ideal generated by U times D. And the only way both of those statements can be true is if the two things are absolutely equal to one another. So the principal ideal generated by D must be exactly the same as the principal ideal generated by u times d. Okay, so in your commutative ring, if you find one greatest common divisor, you can look for others 
by uh, multiplying uh, the greatest common divisor by units in that commutative ring, and the elements you get will always be greatest common divisors. Of course, the unit might not actually change the element, uh, but I can assure you that the answer you will get will be another greatest common divisor. Okay, what I now want to show you is that if we're working in an integral domain, that is the only way you can find other greatest common divisors. Okay, so by doing this, you will have found all the greatest common divisors. There won't be any more. Okay, so now we need to upgrade from just a commutative ring to an integral domain. Okay, so what I now want to prove is the other way round. Okay, so what I now want to prove is that if I have two elements, d and d prime, which have the same principal ideal, okay, so the principal ideal generated by d and the principal ideal generated by d prime, okay, are equal to one another. What I want to show is that one is the a unit multiple of the other. So I want to show, this is what I want to show, so I've put to show here that there exists a unit element such that d is equal to u times d prime, okay? Right, so that's what I want to show, that they are related to one another by a unit. And of course, you could write it the other way around, because this is a unit, so you can multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of u to get it the other way around, that d prime is a unit times at d. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So what I want to show you is that if two elements have the same principal ideal in an integral domain, it has to be an integral domain now, we can conclude uh, that, um, that they are related to one another by a unit here. Okay, right. Uh, so remember, an integral domain is uh, fancier than just a commutative ring. It's a non-zero commutative ring that obeys that property that if I multiply two elements together that are non-zero, I end up with another non-zero element. Okay, so to prove that this is true then, we need to uh, split it into two cases. So the first case, okay, case one, is what if one of these is equal to zero. So let's suppose that d is equal to zero. Then this will be the principal ideal generated by zero. The only other element that will have that as its principal ideal, okay, will be, uh, well, it will be zero. So it forces d prime to be equal to zero. You can't put a non-zero element in, generate its principal ideal, and expect it to be equal to the zero ideal, okay, because at the very least it will contain itself, and if itself isn't equal to zero, then of course this won't be the zero ideal. Okay, so if d is equal to zero, d prime has to equal zero as well, so that's case one, that both of these are equal to zero. Okay, so we're saying the zero ideal is equal to the zero ideal, and then, then of course you can just make this whichever unit you like. Okay, you can make it one if you like, that's always a unit, and then uh, the equation is true. So the theorem's true in that trivial case that d and d prime are equal to zero. So now let's assume case two which is that neither of them are equal to zero. Okay, so it can't be the case that one is equal to zero and the other isn't equal to zero. If one's not equal to zero, then the other isn't equal to zero as well. So case two now is they're both not equal to zero. Okay, right, so what I now want to prove is that I can find uh, some unit which uh, links them, basically. Okay, so how can I do this then? So. If the principal ideal generated by d is equal to the principal ideal generated by d prime, then I can draw two statements from that. The first statement I can draw is that d prime is an element of the principal ideal generated by d, and the second statement I can draw is that d is an element of the principal ideal generated by d prime. Okay, and this is the absolute key to this. Okay, so if these two principal ideals are the same, well, each of these principal ideals will contain the element that generated it, or a principal ideal always contains the element that generated it. So d will be an element of this, and d prime will be an element of this. Okay, so d prime will be in the principal ideal generated by d, and d will be in the principal ideal generated by d prime. So what does that now mean? Well, let's take this one up here firstly, or is that one that I want to take? Um, no, actually, let's take this bottom one. That's the one that will get this equation in the most obvious form. So. If d is in the principal ideal generated by d prime, then that means that d is equal to something in the ring, and I'll put a here because we don't yet know that it's a unit, okay, times d prime. It's my goal now to show that this is going to be a unit, okay? So d must equal a times d prime, okay? In addition, using this top thing here, d prime is an element of the principal ideal generated by d, that shows me that d prime must equal b 
times d, so where b again is an element of the ring. Okay, so I'm just saying that d prime must be a multiple of d here, okay, and d must be a multiple of d prime. Okay, so a and b here are just elements of the ring, or rather of the integral domain, so I'll call this d now. Okay, capital D for integral domain. Okay, what I want to show is that these two things are multiplicative inverses with one another, and therefore that both of them are units here. Okay, so, uh, let's do so then. Uh, so what I can now do, of course, is substitute in for d prime here, b times d. Okay, so it's perfectly valid to replace d prime is equal to b times d, and then what I'll get is that d is equal to a times b times d. Okay, and now what I can do is apply the fact that we're working in an integral domain and apply the cancellation law. But uh, just uh, to actually completely spell this out, I won't just cancel off the D here. Uh, that's what you can do using the cancellation law, but I'll spell it out completely. So what we can do is obviously add the additive inverse of A times B times D onto both sides, and then we'll get that this is D plus the additive inverse of A times B times D, okay, uh, and that will give a zero here. Now, of course, the additive inverse of A times P, B times D is just going to be equal to the additive inverse of A times B times D, like so. So we could swallow the minus sign into a bracket, like so. Okay? We could also, of course, view this as 1 times d, that might be helpful for understanding here. And now we can apply right distributivity to factor out the d there, and we'll get that 1 plus the additive inverse of a times d uh, times d is equal to 0. We then apply uh, the fact that we're working in an integral domain to say that if we've got two things multiplying to give 0, one of them must equal 0. We assumed that d was not equal to 0, so now we can conclude that 1 plus the additive inverse of a, and that should be b, not d, I do apologise for that a times b is equal to 0, and therefore we will take this onto the other side and we'll get that 1 is equal to a times b, or that a times b is equal to 1, and therefore b is the multiplicative inverse of a. Okay, so what I have now successfully shown you then is that uh, this element a did have a multiplicative inverse, so it was a unit, so I could write d is a unit times d prime. So if you're working in an integral domain, the only way that two elements can have the exact same principal ideal is if they're related to each other by a unit, okay? One is a unit times the other. Okay, so this means that if you're working in an integral domain and you have found a greatest common divisor of your two elements A and B, then if you want to search for other greatest common divisors, just multiply your greatest common divisor that you've got, D, by all the units in the ring and see which other elements you get. Those will, those other elements you get will be greatest common divisors and they'll be the only other ones because I've now shown you that the only way two um, elements can have the same principal ideal in an integral domain is if they're related by a unit. Okay, just to give you an example of this, if we're working in the integers, Okay, which we know is an integral domain, so all the whole numbers with the normal addition and multiplication laws defined on them, that is an integral domain. Okay, it's a non-zero commutative ring uh, that uh, has the property that if two elements are multiplying together to give zero, one or both have to equal zero. Okay, um, then if we think about which elements of the integers will generate the exact same principal ideal, so let's for instance consider the principal ideal generated by five, this the, uh, and the only other element in the integers that will generate the exact same principal ideal as that is negative 5. And of course, these two are related to each other by a unit, okay, which is negative 1. The only two units in the integers are 1 and negative 1. Those are the only two things that have multiplicative inverses. 1 is its own multiplicative inverse. Negative 1 is also its own multiplicative inverse. So they're the only two units. Okay, So uh, the elements that will... Um, create the exact same principal ideals as each other are just one integer and it's negative. Okay, so if you've got a greatest common divisor in the integers, the negative of that will also be a greatest common divisor. Okay, so greatest common divisors are related to one another by multiplication by units in an integral domain. Okay, in a more general commutative ring, you can't obviously conclude that all um, greatest common divisors have to be related to one another by multiplication by unit. Okay, so uh, with that we will finish this video on greatest common divisors.